Hey guys, hope you're well and welcome back to the channel. And today we have Danielle from Amon and we're going to have an update. It's been a little while. Obviously we've had COVID, lots of things going on. How are you, Danielle? Yeah, good. Thank you. It's very good to catch up again, James. Very good. Most definitely. I think probably we, we, we chat quite often. We've, probably, we've just had a big catch up offline and now we're going online for all the viewers so they can see what's been going on behind the doors over at Amon. Obviously, you know, we're in a very strange year in 2020. We've had a pandemic. How have you guys coped with the, all of the, the COVID stuff that's been going on? Yeah, I mean, so for us, it's basically, we, we have always had a lot of people working remotely. So um, we basically, in terms of team, we didn't really have a great impact. Um, so yeah, the only thing is that we are not getting together uh, that often like before. So, of course, we're working more remotely. But in terms of team, it didn't change actually much. You know, um, uh, we're still basically working remotely and yeah, we have our uh, meetings and everything. So there's not much uh, that changed in terms of this. Uh, in terms of the user's usage, more or less, we have had the same. So we, we haven't seen big changes. So I guess this the COVID affected a lot of other industries but our industry was not affected that much. So on this, on this side, I think it was, um, it was a good thing for us basically. So we haven't seen great um, you know, problems around COVID for us. Uh, actually, people are more home, are more in their houses, so they're more uh, willing to use digital technology or to try a FinTech, for example. So I think this is actually a positive thing for, for a company like Amon. Yeah, I think a little bit ahead of the game in that sense. And I think it's definitely, I've, I've been working from home with cabaries and I mean, my quality of life has gone through the roof. You, you, like you mentioned before, like I'm, I'm running, I'm cycling, I'm doing so much more that I wouldn't normally be able to do because I've been commuting and, and stuff. So I think it's, it's a good thing overall, but obviously um, that's great that it's not had too much of a, an impact on you guys. I have seen uh, you've got some big news on uh, a new exchange. Do you want to just talk us through that? Yeah, yeah. We, have, we just got listed on uh, liquid.com. Uh, it's a very good exchange. It's a Japanese-based exchange and it's one of the top 20 on CoinMarketCap. And it depends on uh, where you see the trades. Uh, if you see some other sources without the wash trades, it's on the top 10. So it's a very good exchange. We have a very good relationship. Um, we're going to introduce the, to them by Celsius, uh, our partner, uh, which made an introduction and uh, actually worked out fine. Uh, we're working uh, around some something else with them as well, with the, what is called a quick exchange, which might be useful for us for uh, for the launch of the card. Uh, but this one is it's not it's not been in place yet. At the moment, we just launched it um, uh, this week. We launched the one pair BTC Amon. And we're going to add the uh, Ether as well and uh, very likely USDC uh, because we already have it in our wallet. But yeah, definitely Ether is something we want to add as soon as possible because most of our community, they trade on uh, uh, on Uniswap or Banker with Ether. So, um, and we also made it available within our wallet. So that's that's another piece that was missing into our wallet to being able to trade Amon within our wallet. and. Thanks to, uh, to we, we needed a, a centralized exchange and thanks to Liquid, we, uh, we are doing this as well. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've used Liquid back in the day. I'm trying to think what coin I was, I was buying back then. Uh, I can't think now. But yeah, I was, I was, I was using a whole bunch of, uh, when, it, when it was all crazy times and I was trading loads. And I remember just like sitting there for hours watching it on liquid, go up, go down, spy and sell. So um, I, I have used that one before. It's, it's a, a fairly decent uh, exchange. So that's, that's really good news. One of the other big things is obviously you guys are fundraising. And I think what it might be worth going through is sort of maybe explaining what's the difference between the sort of fundraising you're doing now in terms of equity and the fundraising that you did at the very beginning, which was for tokens. Yeah, so we, we're fundraising through a Bank to the Future. Um, yeah, I think probably most of the people in the space, they know Bank to the Future. It's a very good platform for fundraising. Uh, big companies like Kraken or Wirex in 2015, they also fundraised. So there's been a lot of uh, very good projects that fundraised there. 
and they don't accept a lot of projects. So we were very happy to be accepted on this on this platform. Um, uh, we are fundraising for equity, as you say. So equity is a quite a different thing from token. There are, of course, some uh, things which are, let's say, more positive in terms of equity. Generally, an equity, uh, it's based, so the equity is based on the, um, on the value of the company. At the moment, the, the value of the company has been set, uh, not by us, but by the, the, by the VC that uh, is joining this fundraising, which is called Digital Magics. And it's in this uh, 3.5 million USD. Uh, generally, when the company grows, grows also, the, of course, the value of the company. Um, just to give you an idea, Wirex, they just did another crowdfunding a fundraise and they, they, were, uh, they are evaluated 126 million pounds. So of course, there's a big gap you know, between us and them. This is given by the number of users. Of course, they have already launched their card and so on, but it can give an idea of how far you know, we can get to. And um, so what it, what it means having an equity, you own a piece of the company uh, and when the company grows, uh, basically the, 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 you, uh, your equity value will grow. Uh, on the other side, you, um, uh, you, it will be harder for you to sell it if you want to sell it in short term. So you can sell your equities when we do another fundraising, for example. So um, uh, with the token, it's definitely easier to sell it because whenever we are listed, you just go there and you can sell it. Of course, it depends a little bit on the liquidity, but you can sell it pretty much at any time. Uh, but it's also much more exposed to, to the market, right? So, to the, so for sure to the token utility, we're going to create around, the, uh, this, uh, around our token, but also uh, related to the market conditions, okay? To the, of course, to the order books. So um, I would say that with the token, definitely it's more a roller coaster, so an up and down. The equity, you know, it keeps its value a bit more stable, definitely, and it grows along with the company. And uh, the only thing is that to to sell it, you know, you need to be aware that you will probably need to wait a bit more time rather than uh, with the token you can sell it. Uh, it's basically two sides of the same coin. Uh, we we don't mind, you know, if users are taking tokens or or equities. Of course, now you have the chance. Users have the chance to get. Um, some equities, which is not a common thing, you know, we, we do it now and then maybe we'll do another fundraising probably another year or uh, maybe another year and a half, two years, it depends a little bit on the, on the amount that we're raising. But it's two sides of the same coin and we are happy uh, for anybody that is on one or another side. Cool. So the one's like more of a, a short term, you can be in and out and the other one's long term but you get a piece of the pie, as, if you will. So in terms of the fundraiser itself, um, how much are you looking to raise? When does it kick off? What are the dates and how do people get involved? So we started the fundraise uh, a few days ago. So it's been around already for, uh, I guess, today's 10 days or yeah, tomorrow will be 10 days, basically. Um, uh, we have already reached uh, 386 uh, yeah, thousand USD. Our goal um, at the moment on the platform, you will probably see the goal of 350K. Uh, but we are increasing our target to 500,000. So to give uh, the possibility um, to some other people to, to join the company is still left uh, around about 35 days. Uh, so we have had quite a good uh, amount of funds coming in in the first days. So it was quite successful at the moment. Uh, so to give more chances to other people to put more funds, uh, we're just extending it basically. We were just going over funding. Um, so yeah, I want our target is, is all in USD because on Bank to the Future, everything is in US dollar. So our target will be uh, $500,000, yeah. And in terms of investing in, in this round, what, what were you gonna use those funds for? Because obviously in terms of maybe the roadmap, what does that look like for the next 12 months? Yeah, so we're fundraising mainly to launch uh, two products. So the first one is the card where we have been working on this for, for a long time already. We got the approval from Union Pay International. So for us, it's just more a matter of getting the funds uh, to pay the last fees and just go live basically. Uh, there's always compliance around that that we are always uh, checking in, uh, but we have done already the integration. We are starting basically to uh, test some, uh, uh, some uh, cards 
uh, and uh, yeah, we aim to launch. At, so when when the fundraise uh, will finish, it will be very likely end of December, and uh, we're planning then to take like one month more or less to test the cards and launch very likely in February. So, but um, we got a really approval, so everything is in place, and we just need basically the funds to launch it. So the first one, the first product is this one, and then um, our investment assistant. Uh, sometimes we have been talking about um, this investment assistant, so it's a product that we really believe in. Um, we know that the, um, every year there are millions and millions of new users in crypto, and uh, we want to help these new users to understand more the space, right? So um, if you want to bring the next millions or billions of users, we need to educate them to use cryptocurrencies. So we're launching this investment assistant, which is made of two parts. One part is a statistical tool which uh, uh, analyzes basically the volatility, historical performances, trends of the cryptos that you have within your portfolio. And a second pillar, which is a, a portfolio risk assessment analysis. So it gives you a score of your risk of your portfolio. So if you have, for example, some crypto which have been very volatile in the past years, uh, you probably your risk profile is going to be very high and you might want to adjust your portfolio on a less risk profile, for example, if, if you don't want to have uh, that amount of risk. So you probably want to just switch some of your coins into stable coins or just uh, transfer it to exchange it to euro pounds or uh, some fiat currencies. So um, this is the second product we want to launch. Um, it's uh, more to educate people, you know, give them the chance to understand better cryptos and of course take their, their investment decisions on crypto or uh, then when they want to spend the cryptos. So this is why we're raising so for, for the launch of these two products. Well, it sounds like that second one is really to simplify the, the whole process because, you know, yourself and I and, and many of the people that are watching right now have, have, have walked the hard miles to understand and maybe hit roadblocks and like not understand stuff and have to watch videos and chat to people in forums and stuff where you, I suppose you don't want that when people get your card, you just want them to have it a simple, enjoyable experience that actually go, do you know what? I heard it was really hard and it wasn't. And actually I'll use that again. And then you get that sort of good uh, user experience, raving fans as like Tony Robbins likes to say, and then they'll keep coming back to use it because it's simple. Correct. Yeah, there's still people that I don't know if it ever happened to you, but it's still people that when I talk about uh, the value of one Bitcoin, you know, and I say, yeah, one Bitcoin just hit 18 grand, 18,000 18, USD. Then they say, ah, I can't afford the one Bitcoin, you know, and I'm like, no, I mean, you can afford it because you can you can buy a piece of Bitcoin if you want, you know, so you can even buy 10 euro, 20 euro, you know, so um, there are still people, you know, thinking that you have to buy the full Bitcoin, you know, and they can't enter in the space, you know. So we want to kind of try to help, you know, also in this side, yeah. Mm. I, I, it's quite funny because I, I had a little chat with my niece the other day and she phoned me up and uh, she was going, have you seen the price of Bitcoin? I went, yeah. And she went, how much have you got? I was like, none of your business. <laughs> she was like, oh, you, you bought it ages ago. And I said, I know I did. Thanks. Thanks for that. And she was like, and then she was asking for Christmas presents. So, <laughs> so uh, bless her. She, she, she switched on there. She, she knows the gig. But I think, I think it was like, um, when was it? When I first got into it, I think Ethereum was $8 and I was dithering for, I must have dithered for two months. Like, oh, should I go in, shouldn't I? And I think Bitcoin was, uh, hovering around about seven seven hundred fifty dollars, people thought I was mental at the time. But obviously, I think what it is is just being able to see into the future of of all the different things that you know, like working from home. A lot of people, a lot of companies said that won't that won't work. People won't do work and they'll get lazy or whatever. But actually, what we're seeing is people are more productive, right. and actually, you can save the planet. You don't have to drive around. So I think people are realizing that you know all of these things can change. And I think you touched on a point earlier about technology. You know, look at all the companies that are doing really well. Netflix, Amazon. I mean, that's gone crazy. You know, all of these, all of these key sort of um, technologies as such in the background are all really progressing because of, of everything that's changing. And I, and I don't think people want to go back. Correct. Yeah, I mean, here's some companies that are just shutting down their offices because they save millions 
um, you know, companies like Revolut or uh, Vodafone, you know, they're trying to cut in other offices because at the end you save a lot of money. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, save a lot of uh, costs that you have, you know. So, I mean, we don't plan, you know, to have completely uh, remote working, but definitely, you know, we already have devs, you know, and people that work remotely and we will continue to have them. Yeah, that makes sense. So in terms of, um, you've obviously given a, a bit of a deadline or, or, or guide in terms of when we'll see the card out, which is February next year, which is, I think will, will excite a lot of people. I think it's been, it'll be very welcomed. And in terms of sort of like, as we get into sort of maybe the end of half two or half one, sorry, and into half two next year, what sort of things can we expect from Amon? Yeah. So, uh, what we want to, what we want to achieve is, uh, um, to expand our our presence globally, so we know that with the Union Pay, it's going to be easier because we can do this with the same issuer. So our goal, our let's say mid-term goal, is to um, um, allow um, the wallet to become a global wallet, also with a card. Okay, we have seen already uh, that some companies try to do it, you know, with the, with Union Pay, and that's our that's our main goal. Okay, of course, there is a growth, you know, we will focus first on Europe because that's where we're going to launch, you know, the cards at the beginning. So we will probably have a lot of uh, uh, marketing to do uh, to promote our product, uh, grow user base, and we'll have a lot of, we'll be busy on the metrics and a lot of other stuff. But um, what we want to get is uh, some new licenses and the possibility to expand globally. There are a lot of markets which are still uh, unserved, right? So we're a lot of also other competitors, you know, they didn't get there. Uh, U.S. market is still very, uh, I mean, still very open, you know, uh, South America or Australia. It, there are quite a lot of other markets, you know, that you can try to get into uh, before the others, or even if you enter, you know, after some others, you know, there will still be a lot of space to, um, to become an important player. Yeah, I, I mean, I knew someone who sits on the boards for... Um... AI for the UN and stuff and they and they were basically saying that you know Africa is going to be the next superpower so you know if you if you just take them as a country they've got lots and lots of resources so they're able to sell to everybody else in the world and then if you take the fact that you know they, they're not as structured with banking say maybe like Europe and some of the other countries that actually they have less red tape therefore they could leapfrog a lot of the other countries in terms of AI technology you know a crypto bank those types of things so yeah it's definitely worth looking at some other options and other countries and where i suppose where the biggest opportunity is i suppose with the least amount of spend right yeah 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 africa is not a country we have a sort of place where we, we actually consider that uh but yeah apart from this there, there are also other places probably africa is because yeah the level of uh, um yeah the people are uh, yeah I mean, probably not everyone there has a bank account, you know, so it will be harder to, <clears throat> to access, you know, to a product like our product or uh, the infrastructure of smartphones or internet, you know, it will be probably harder. But definitely, you know, there are a lot of uh, places where um, crypto is, 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 is growing exponentially and they don't have access yet, you know, to a wallet like our wallet or a card like, like the one we are launching. That's cool. Um, and, and just in terms of sort of circling back to the uh, the funding piece, so if people want to get involved with that, um, how do they go about that? Yeah, so it basically you have to go uh, to the Bank of the Future website. Uh, you will have to go through a KYC process there as well. Uh, but it's, it's a very easy process, but it's a, a normal standard process with all the uh, fundraising crowdfunding platforms they have. Uh, if you're a U.S. investor, you need to be an, an accredited invest, an accredited U.S. investor. Um, uh, but if you are from many other places, you just, you just have to go through a KYC, and then you can decide if you want to invest in uh, BTC or in, in Ether or some other crypto um, or uh, in fiat. And yeah, you go through the process; it's quite smooth. But once you uh, register and uh, log in, you you'll be already able to see all the information about the pitch, all the documentation, which is something probably you, you, you might want to go through, you, wanna, you might want to read, uh, and then, yeah, make the investment, basically. 
Okay, and what I'll do, if you can send me all the links, Daniele, I will have them in the description so people can easily access that if they uh, if they feel that they want a, a bit of equity of Amon and the Bank of the Future. Yeah, we'll do that, we'll do that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time, Daniele, and I'll catch you uh, very, very soon, mate. Yeah, thank you, James, and thank everyone. Okay, have a good day. Changed your room, yeah. Before it was very dark, but now. Yeah, well, what I'll do? Let me um. Actually, I can just pick it up and show you. So I've I've completely redone my, my the the my uh. So you can see there. Got my ironing board. Look, well <laughs> professional. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, if I show you this, like I've completely redone all the living room.